Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Today, we're diving into a fascinating recent study on muscle versus tendon adaptation and what it means for how we design training programs. If you've assumed that hard effort is enough to make everything adapt, including muscles and tendons, joints, connective tissue, this episode is for you because spoiler alert, tendon doesn't care how tired you are or how fatigued you are, it wants something a little bit different to adapt. Let's explore. So let's set the stage with a 2024 study that compellingly shows us how tendons and muscles actually adapt differently. And this has training implications because if we wanna train for muscles to get bigger, faster, stronger, that's a little bit different than training tendons. And this study does a very good job of demonstrating this with a really cool, unique design. And so I wanna demonstrate this just by walking you through the study. I know sometimes walking through research can be a little bit boring. I promise I'll do my best to make it interesting. But more importantly, let's walk away with some practical applications so we understand how we can use this information to make better training programs. So here's what they did. Researchers had 12 healthy adults train their calves for 12 weeks. Each person trained both legs, but with a slight twist. One leg was trained in a plantar flex position, toes pointed down, as you can see here on the screen, while the other was trained in a dorsiflex position with the toes pulled up in this deep stretch calf position. Both legs did isometric plantar flexion contractions at 80% of their max strength. Each session was three sets to failure, three seconds of pushing, three seconds of rest, done three times per week. So you have matched training volume, matched training intensity, and the same frequency and the same level of fatigue. But the dorsiflex leg produced more strain, about 6% compared to only 2% in the plantar flex leg. And that made all of the difference. This strain position, which you can kind of see down here, and you would know this just intuitively from dorsiflex position, you're gonna kind of crank on that foot, bringing those toes up, and it's gonna put a lot of stress and strain down here, right? At the bottom where that Achilles inserts into the heel versus that plantar flex position where you have basically some lax, right? It's not very taut or tight, and so there's less strain. And they measured all of this, and they trained them equally with this being the only difference. And this is why I love research, because we can focus in and narrow in on slight little differences that can make all the difference in training adaptation. I know that's a little bit redundant, right? But we can control all other variables except this one thing, and in this case, the position of the Achilles and the ankle. So what happened, right? Let's talk about the results. And let's start with the muscle response. Both legs got stronger, about 20 to 25% gains in plantar flexion strength, and both legs grew, around eight to 13% increases in muscle thickness and pinnation angle across the triceps serrate or the calf muscle complex. Now the cool part, these results were identical in both legs, even though one had significantly more mechanical loading. So what does that tell us? Muscle responds incredibly well to metabolic stress and effort. You don't need heavy loads to grow, just high fatigue and intent. And we know that from the literature on hypertrophy, right? Proximity to failure is important. The great news for athletes who need to manage load, deal with joint issues, or are rehabbing because we can use lighter loads and still get that muscle response. But now let's talk about the tendons, and this is the plot twist. When they looked at the Achilles tendon, things were very different than the muscle. Only the dorsiflex leg, the one under high force and high strain, showed increases in tendon stiffness, tendon cross-sectional area, Young's modulus, which is a measure of the material quality of the tendon, while the plantar flex leg, which worked just as hard in terms of effort and fatigue, literally did everything the exact same, did not have any tendon adaptations. Even after 12 weeks of consistent training to failure, because there was the lack of the high strain, there wasn't an adaptation. And that's huge insight. Tendon doesn't adapt to fatigue, it adapts to strain. Now I've linked below the full research breakdown on the website so you can dive in a little bit deeper and have access to the full commentary. But what I do wanna do is just spend a brief moment here demonstrating some of these results so you can see how the researchers did a really good job of measuring things. Figure three here off to the right, we see Achilles tendon strain. And what you see up top is that Achilles tendon strain in the dorsiflex leg hovering around that 6% range, where underneath that is the plantar flex leg, and you see that hovers around 2% for the 12 weeks. And if we scroll down, we can see changes in muscle that are very similar. So we see here in figure five that there's not big differences between each condition, plantar flex and dorsiflex, in pinnation angle and muscle thickness, but we understand there was a difference in that strain, and that led to the differences in here, which is the cross-sectional area of the Achilles tendon, and you can see it broken down 
down by percentages off on the left side that Dorsey flex leg you can see clear differences marked also with the statistical significance here and then off to the right no differences and so a really well done study that takes the same individual both of their legs training slightly different just the ankle position everything else is matched and we're going to measure strain we're going to measure muscle cross-sectional area and tendon cross-sectional area along with the other things we've talked about again this is really cool because we wouldn't do this in practice but researchers do these things for us and then we can use this to make better training decisions so let's talk about those training decisions. This mismatch between muscle and tendon adaptation matters because stronger muscles that generate more force without matching tendon improvements can create greater mechanical stress on the tendon. And over time, that can increase your risk for overuse injuries or tendinopathies, right? I don't wanna say that it's gonna lead to an injury, but certainly it might increase the chances of that happening. Think about your athletes who are already pushing hard with low load circuits, rehab protocols, or conditioning work. They might be getting strong Longer muscles but if the tendon strain is low then they're not getting more resilient tendons to match the increases in that muscle strength and that could be a setup for imbalance again I don't want to suggest you're gonna get injured but if I'm hedging my bets then I want to make sure that I'm training my tendons to adapt to the increases that we're getting in our muscle size and strength right more force is coming from that muscle it's pulling on that tendon and I want to make sure I'm building resilient tendons that can handle some of that pulling and some of those forces okay so what do we do with this information Let's start by using long length isometrics or heavy slow resistance to create high tendon strain. Understand that not all hard training is tendon friendly, especially if you're staying in short muscle lengths, right? That might be good for the muscle, but not good for the tendon. You wanna build in dedicated tendon training phases, especially during early off season or post rehab, right? Can we prepare these tendons for what's to come? That's those increases in strength and size. Now that's it for the episode. I don't wanna keep boring you with research, but if this has the gears turning, share with a fellow coach or a rehab professional. And if you want a little bit more reading, just hit the link below and it'll take you to my full research breakdown. Do me one solid on the way out, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see y'all next time.